Hey everyone, stick with us versus herd. If it's your first time here, for the content, hit subscribe. If you want to get notifications for when we post videos, tap the bell. If you want to subscribe to our options trading live channel, I go live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before market open. Link is below in the description as well. If you want to join the UVH fam, our community, link is in the description to our Discord and our options trading group on Facebook. If you made money today, comment got paid. If you lost money today, comment learned a lesson. If you could do me one favor, hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. Um, before we get into the trades here and kind of my thoughts are, if you haven't yet joined the Discord, 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 <laughs> Disc, just a Southern for a second there, Discord, uh, we posted our very first contest there yesterday. We did whoever could guess the opening price of Domino's is would get a free pizza. Someone got within nine cents of opening price. They guessed 380, came in at 379.91. So we sent them a, a Domino's gift card. So we're just trying to have some fun, you know, with the trading. Trading is hard. Trading is stressful, and just trying to break it up a little bit with a little bit of fun and give some people something to do, <laughs> you know. Because not every day, not every day is a winning day, as 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 you all know, as I all as I know too. Because you know, post my losses today, kind of a mixed bag. Did get paid today. Um, I'm gonna go through my trades here, but we did take some hits, we did take some licks, but we overall we came out victorious. We have some positions on for tomorrow. I would say probably a bit risky borderline yolo <laughs> okay but let's get into it uh get into my closing trades right here dominoes came in so dominoes they they had a relatively flat earnings i was selling an at the morning iron condor i was selling the 385 call 385 put and then i had i had 25 25 uh wings were 25 <laughs> blah 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 wings the wings were 25 points apart so i had 25 points to the downside so i, I bought the 360 put and i bought the 410 put for the upside mainly shorting the 385 put and the 385 call on that trade if we look at dominoes i collected 203 bucks so i bought it i put it on for a 1903 credit Bought it back for $17, so I made the difference, $203 there. Domino's this morning opened up pretty flat. The one thing the one thing that I will say about Domino's is don't trade it if you don't know what you're doing because it's very hard to get in and out of there. I don't recommend trading it. I generally just trade it a couple times a year, and this was, I think the first time, I, I don't even know, when was the last time I traded Domino's? I don't even know. Um, I mean, not within the last 120 days, at least that's what Tastyworks says. So that's as far back as it goes. So I only generally trade it because because the options are very low volume. We opened flat yesterday. It closed down at around 381 area, and we opened today at 379, and then it just dropped, just tanked. Saw 403 on earnings, and then just just tanked and pretty much held 360 area all day. So this is probably the last time I'm going to trade it for you know quite some time, but. You know, we, we, we got out, we got out. It did take a little bit of work to get out that, to get that credit out. Um, Netflix, Netflix was a trade that I was holding. So I was mainly playing, I made, I made 460 on it this morning. I was playing the 410 call for next week expiration on Netflix. Now Netflix, it, I bought it for 1955, sold it for 2415. And now it just, it just kind of got crazy. So Netflix, I bought it in, on an inside day. My target essentially was like the 340, 345 area today. And yesterday, Netflix, as you guys know, had earnings. They were relatively flat pretty much all day. So I bought in on the consolidation day. Then it opened today. It really ramped up. When it came up into the 430, what time did I close at? 846. So I actually closed it on this candle that I'm showing you right here, this candle right here. When it got above 431, 430, 431, I think it was like a 432, you know, it really skyrocketed up to 438 there. But, you know, when you're trading like that, you're not going to try to get the entire move. Thankfully, I got a big percentage of this. I mean, I got from the bottom. I mean, this literally ran from 419 to 438. It ran almost 20 points right here. So let me just pull up this Netflix call real quick. 
kind of show you the pricing. You know, you don't want you don't want to mess around and and you get a lot more money when you're selling it on those big green bars. So let me look at this 420. Yeah, this one I sold it for 24. It's right now going for like 17 bucks. So not great holding, not good. It pretty much after that big move, it faded all day. And then we had the Gilead news and it kind of got a little crazy. So as you can see here, it did not pay to hold. This thing skyrocketed up to 26. 26 was the most. I got 24.15 for it. So we got, we got the bulk of this move right here. It went from literally 16 to 26. So it had a 10 point a 10 point move on the 420 contract which is pretty incredible so we 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 paid 19 for it got it at 24 and you know we made we made 460 bucks we made over 20 percent and you know thankfully this is this is why you take your gains because then it just faded the rest of the day and look at what happened to the contract price came back down to 17 would have been losing i paid 19 for it close at 17. even though even though you have next week expiration doesn't pay to hold does not pay to hold so hopefully someone learned something from that because it's a good it's a good reminder it doesn't always pay to hold and i'll show you that on, on snapchat as well snapchat <clears throat> snapchat i made 77 dollars mainly on the mainly on the 16 call contract you guys know i lost 500 dollars 570 dollars yesterday shorting snapchat for earnings i got back set only 77 this contract the four, 16 strike calls were actually up over $200 yesterday, didn't take the profit, only got $115. So that's what happens when you when when you're when you're waiting it out. And that's that's why I took the profit off of Netflix because then I got a little bit burned. Sure, I get, I got a little money back, but nowhere is near where I was yesterday. I made back nearly half the losses. I made back half the losses, then I gave a bunch up today on on Snapchat. So it 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 wasn't it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. Thankfully I made money in other areas, but not good xop lost some money they squeezed me out you know xop did come down a little bit now xop i did have the may the may 15s it cost me like 460 i sold them for let me pull it up here i mean i've been holding xop for a few days now so i bought it for 465 sold it for 240 basically basically 50 percent loss and this is why i sold it you know it did come down a little bit but it was just it was just squeezing look at that squeeze oil was running hard everything was running hard oil was just ripping and this was just ripping and then it you know came down a little bit i sold it when it was like 47 60 because I, I sold it on the first dip down you know but what i was mainly concerned about looking in here is filling this gap up to 50. i'm like you know what? if it fills the gap here it's over it it, it broke against the resistance i should have closed out at 47 didn't close it at 47 let it run to 48 47 was my stop loss let it run to 48 and you know that's what happens you lose you lose some money but you know it's okay it's okay it's about how you do overall today and overall today i was profitable you're gonna take some hits it depends on how you get back up from it you know um going into tomorrow let me cover spy real quick because I'm, I'm interested in that I, i'm going to show you my trades that i have on for tomorrow expiration we did we did do a little bit of a risky trade here but looking at spy right now and if you haven't yet already, hit the like button while I, while I get Spy up here. Appreciate it. Helps me out with the YouTube algo. <laughs> Anyways, Spy. Spy absolutely ripped up, gapped up this morning. Pretty nice. I mean, how much did it gap up last night? So, Because we had this huge sell-off end of day. Then we gapped up. So it closed at like, what, 279? I guess not a huge gap up. Opened around 280 then ripped all the way up to 284 and just faded all day and then we had this ginormous red candle which was you know the gilead news saying that it wasn't an effective drug for coronavirus and then gilead says no it does treat some symptoms and who who, who, who knows who knows anymore i don't know but the price is the price is whatever the price is that's what we got to focus on it doesn't matter who knows what who know when no whenever who knows what when and when we just want to know what the price is and the price is right now 278 so it doesn't matter who's right matters what the price is so looking at spy you know i thought that i was going to try to push this 286 288 area today it did not because it just got it got hard slammed here double top right here 283.80 area 283.80 area area and then just it was it was grinding down before that that news and then that just put the dagger in it and yeah we had some two-sided action but overall there was a downtrend real choppy trying to come back up and just it just couldn't do it you know it just couldn't do it thankfully i stayed i stayed out of the day trades today i didn't really see any day trades that looked 
looked really that great, honestly. So now I think that we're going to probably test, you know, this 273, two set, a lower 270 area. I think maybe possibly tomorrow, 270, 250, 273 area tomorrow. So we'll see. That's a that's a six point drop. We actually spy close red. This is the first Thursday in five weeks that we've seen a red day on a Thursday. You know, we had the jobs report, 4.4 million unemployed, ripped up hard, and this is the first Thursday that we've come into where we actually close red. I mean, it wasn't by much, but it was still, it's still, hey, it still counts, it's still red, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I'm going a little, look, I got a pounding headache right now, so I took some medicine, I'm trying to drink some water, but it's just not, not shaking. So. Into tomorrow, I did play Intel earnings. I did have an iron condor on Intel. Now, Intel, INTC, I did buy two of these. I did place an order for two of these, only got filled for one. And that, from what I can tell right now, probably a blessing because I got 289 credits, kind of going a little bit against me right now. And I'll go over my position here, but let me talk about Intel real quick. Intel, currently trading at 55 really on the low end of where I was hoping it would be. They drop on low Q2 guidance. They had, everything was great with Intel, except for they're not giving any more guidance out for the year and Q2 guidance is really low. So that's, that's, exa that's essentially why Intel is dropping is because it's not what happened last quarter, it's what's gonna happen in the next quarter. And what I think what they're trying to do is soften the blow. So if they already start to lower expectations, the bar gets lower for them to basically walk over next quarter for next earnings. And they're like, hey, you guys did amazing last quarter. It's because they lowered the bar already. So this is companies do this all the time. They're where that the earnings, they know earnings are gonna be bad, but if they start lowering expectations now, when they get to the next earnings, they're like, actually, hey, we did better than we thought. It's because you already lowered the bar. Instead of having to jump over the bar, you now just have to walk over the bar. So that is why Intel gets a little, little crazy. But what I'm looking at in Intel right here, so I am currently, so I got 289 credit. Let me see what this is here. Uh, Okay, so let me take out some premium. So right now it's trading at 133% premium. I'm gonna take out for tomorrow. Take out some premium here. I'm gonna take about I'm gonna take out about a 40% premium crush into tomorrow. So premium will be our IV will be like 90% tomorrow open. So looking at this, and that does not look right at all. Tasty works. What is what is this? What is this? Okay, well, all right. Well, essence, essentially, let me just try to show you what, what I mean, this, this isn't gonna give a good deal. Well, let's see, does it actually show the price though for tomorrow? Okay, so something's going on with Tastyworks, but you can kind of see the price here. So basically, and what I mean by that price is this like little little date box right up in here. So what I'm looking at right now, it's at 50, basically 56. So if it opens at 56, this position, I'm gonna lose about 50 bucks on this. I'll start making money tomorrow around 56.60 area, 56, we'll call it 56.50. So I needed to go up 75 cents from here to start being on the green side. If it comes back up to 59, I'll get close to max profit. If it goes up to 58, I'll make 134 bucks. So, you know, we did kind of hedge this a little bit, but like, had, I, it's, it's dangerous. I definitely don't suggest doing this. Um, I felt kind of, I felt like I just wanted to cut loose a little bit on Friday. I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll admit it. I'll admit it. On Friday, I wanted to cut loose a little bit. So right now, I'm looking. I need it. Be, I need Intel to basically be between 57 and to the high side i need it below 62 area which doesn't seem to be the problem i'm right now focusing on this 55 66 area so we're on the border border of being profitable if it can't push up another 75 cents or so we're you're gonna have to chalk this one up for a loss so thankfully two of them didn't get filled i only got filled in one iron condor so that's what we're looking there if you want to see what that looks like right now this is what this trade looks like on here, I'm short these two, uh, the call and the put, 
59 and a half. I bought the 54 and a half and I bought the 64 and a half call. So that's what that looks like. But going into tomorrow, I did do sort of a protection YOLO play on Apple for, I, I normally don't do this if you guys watch my videos for a while. I generally don't do this, but I did buy a put because I felt like Apple was going to go down. The whole tech sector seemed to be selling off pretty good today. It never, it couldn't get a bounce. Um, Apple, after hours, this report came out as well, where, where essentially, you know, they're saying tech companies are pulling back on hiring. Oops, there you go. Tech companies, tech companies are pulling back on hiring. You know, flashing another good morning sign for the U.S. economy. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, why would they hire more people if they're trying to control costs? I mean, we already know all this, but you know, here's an article to prove something that you already know. So but here, here we are. You know, sometimes it takes to, takes an article for the algos to say, hey, maybe it's not such a good idea to keep buying stock when unemployment is 30 million people. Maybe not, but for right now, it is. It's a good idea. I'm not bitter. I'm not angry. <laughs> I'm just. Going, I'm going into Friday unhinged, but after this, I got, I got a Gilead play here too. So just, so bear bear with me. So about the 275 put on Apple it was up five percent at close. Apple sold off pretty pretty good. You know, and it's been it's been grinding all week long. I think that my target area is the 270 area. I feel like we're going to come back to where we were at on Tuesday. We're going to probably I'm I'm thinking I'm hopefully we're going to open at 270 tomorrow. That's that's my goal. I'll take that trade off. That is what I'm looking for and I do think that we could revisit if we hit 270, I think we could hit 268, 267 area tomorrow is the essential target. But I'm not going to try to squeeze it all. Now, Gilead GILD, you know, kind of a mess today after they reported. Let me see if I can pull that up, that article real quick. Um, okay, so Gilead, they said right here, Financial Times citing documents accidentally pub accidentally published by the World Health Organization. That's why we can't have next things, you know. That Gilead Sciences drug did not improve patients' condition or reduce the coronavirus pathogen in their bloodstream. Those findings, according to the report, came from a clinical trial in China. So, the whole market, apparently the whole market came apart on that news because, I mean, SPY dropped, Apple dropped. I mean, every single stock dropped. This was an algo-driven news event. It dropped everything. You know, futures, everything. Like if you're looking at the S&P futures, I mean, it, it, it dropped everything. This was this was up to 28.28, looking to make another leg up, and then got slaughtered from 28.28 all the way down to 27.85. I mean, this was, this was definitely definitely hitting the market as a whole and Gilead came down from 83 all the way down to 76 and it tried to bounce back up so what did I do I've been kind of wanting to get short I mean this is very choppy trades I mean this could go either way it's kind of a gamble I get it. I normally don't trade pharma but I don't really I don't really believe in I didn't really believe in this bounce here of what happened to Gilead they do have earnings coming up as well so Gilead GILD, they have earnings on, so April 30th currently. So what I did was I got into the May 15th expiration. I want to give myself a lot of time. I didn't pay a lot of money for this. But I put on a, I put on a debit spread for 209 bucks. So what I did on here was I bought the 70 put and I shorted the 50, the 50 put. So pretty, pretty wide out there. But this is kind of what I was thinking on Gilead here. You know, if we come down to let's say earnings are the 30th, so let's hook up this analysis. Let's, let's go to the let's go to 430 or even 51. So they have earnings on 5, 430. We'll go to 51, see what's this trading at. Right now, IV is relatively low. That's why I put on a debit spread. And if it gets closer to earnings and this increases, it'll only it'll only help out my position. So we're up. I'm up on this position at currently about 13% already. And what I'm looking at here on Gilead is if it if it starts moving above 80, we'll start losing some money. Max loss I can lose is 200 bucks. But below where it's at now, 
is when we're starting to make the money. So if I hold on to this till May 1st after the earnings event, you know, it'll start increasing in value. So if it comes down to 70 here, I'll be making about $224 on May 1st. If it comes down to, you know, 60, I'll be making 800 bucks. You know, so this cost me $200 and max profit is 17, almost $1,800. So max profit cost me $200, max profit is $1,800. So you could potentially, I mean, if this thing, if this thing really, 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 really gets hammered, I just thought there was a really nice short sub today because it, it, it fell on that report, then it bounced up really nice and I put the position on. And that's why, because it was pushing back up to 80, however, it still closed 4% red. So that is what I did today on Gilead. And what I'm looking, at, I'm looking at. So it's not a trade that I'm going to be closing tomorrow or anything, but it's something I'm going to be holding for a few weeks or maybe a week. We'll see, we'll see what happens with the price action. If it goes my favorite big, I'm going to take it off. So if you watch this video to the end, comment watch to the end, hit the like button. As always, stay safe, stay green. It's us versus her.